move on. <laughs> Independent MP Andrew Wilkie has confirmed uh, he'll support the government's watered-down poker machine reforms. He says it's better than nothing. I'm giving this my reluctant support. Um, this is not what I would do if it was up to me. It is, it is very, very unfortunate that the government walked away from the agreement it made with me after the 2010 election. Um, I'm not going to sing the praises of this. This is not a great solution. But frankly, with the amendments that the government has agreed to, I think it's better than nothing. It may be all we can get, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to stand in the way of this, of this modest win. The bill's unlikely to pass the lower house. The coalition has concerns about it, while the Greens say they won't support the government plan as it stands. What we'd like to see is we'd like to see the bill amended and improved. So we would support this bill if it also included $1 bets so that we had every machine in the country that was $1 bet ready. We'd also support the bill if we had a start date. Families and Community Services Minister Jenny Macklin has ruled out the $1 bets idea. She says that would be too expensive. This uh, issue is not as simple as it seems. The advice we have is that the costs of uh, introducing dollar bets would require around a billion dollars to be spent just on changing the games alone. The Greens and Nick Xenophon dispute that $1 billion figure, saying it would cost more like $200 million. Sukata, you've been uh, involved as an advocate for... Uh, pokey reform. Tell us, what's your reaction to Andrew Wilkie's comments today? Um, and I might say pro bono activist. I'm actually doing it because I care. I know that's outrageous and unexpected. <laughs> but, um, oh, look, I've got to say, I mean, it's a sad day. I mean, Andrew's clearly been under the most enormous pressure. But in some ways, today doesn't mean very much um, because this will not make it through the Senate. And, you know, I know some of the attacks have been, well, if you knock this legislation out, you know, you're left with nothing. Well, quite frankly, the legislation as it currently stands basically delivers nothing. Why is that? Well, what it does is it sets up a trial, which will take a year or so. The clubs are still playing games in Canberra about what that's actually going to look like. When you actually get the trial eventually run, then it's going to be reviewed for a year or so and they'll decide whether it works or it doesn't work. And, you know, quite frankly, we haven't seen all the frame, the, um, the, the reference points for that, so who knows what that's going to look like. So by the time you get to 2016, 2018, you'll find that um, it's all been a dreadful failure and we'll be back where we've begun. But because there's a process in place, nothing meaningful can be done between now and then. It's a really rotten outcome. OK, let's go back to the idea of the $1 maximum bets. The Productivity Commission recommended that. Their idea was to reduce it from $10 Would... maximum bets to $1 maximum bets so that instead of losing a maximum of 1200 an hour, you could lose, lose only 120 an hour. Now... The Greens and Nick Xenophon say they'd like to amend that bill to, to bring in $1 bets. What hope is there of Labor supporting that particular aspect? Absolutely zero, because their masters and the clubs don't want it to happen. I mean, if we come right back, I mean, if you remember that press conference in January, the Prime Minister and uh, Minister Macklin both said that they were implementing the main recommendation of the Productivity Commission report. And to your point, Steve, they weren't. The major recommendation was one one twenty, so maximum $1.00 bet with a maximum loss of 120 an hour. That was their recommendation and they suggested mandatory pre-commitment as a perhaps also. And let's not forget this position of 1120 was the position Andrew Wilkie took to the government in the first instance. And the billion dollar figure? Is there any if truth to that, Jenny Macklin's quote? Can I tell you, I mean, not that I'll ever be listened to, but I'd love to see the costings. I wonder if someone could pop them on the table to have a look at. I know there have been plenty of FOIs. There's enough information out there to know that that's a nonsense number. It's not, quite frankly, that's much more exciting than the $43.7 billion hollow man number put on the MBN. It's just as flaky. Isn't it? Isn't the giveaway here that the, the clubs who fought so hard against the original proposal, the mandatory pre-commitment, on the basis of cost, and there was lots of numbers thrown around there in the billions then, um, said it's, it's impossible, it'll just, you know, hollow us out, it's, we can't have it. Now, the same dollars presumably will be spent in getting these um, machines all retrofitted, ready to go to flick the switch allegedly in 2016, and there's not a peep out of the clubs about the cost. In fact, they're, mm. they're backing this. And, and let's <laughs> not forget, guys, that in Victoria you've already got a $5 maximum bet. And goodness gracious, the sky hasn't fallen. And no one said how much that cost, so presumably it wasn't well, too the outrageous. Actual, the actual numbers are pretty small when yeah, you have I a look at it. Yeah, I think it's very small. Very small. Peter, numbers. what's your reaction to uh, Andrew Wilkie's uh, backing down here? Uh, well, just on the, uh, you know, on the trial, yeah. I mean, what'll happen? They'll all go down to Queen Bee and, you know, so, I mean, what, this trial business seems to me, uh, not that I know much about pokies, but that doesn't seem a really plausible uh, proposition. Um, I think the truth is that 
as Sue really says, basically nothing's going to come of this. And I sort of find it quite incredible because Andrew Wilkie uh, thought that he was dealing with people that he could trust. And the fact is he found out earlier this year that Labor, you know, turned against him. And yet his political position is he's still prepared to stand up as he did today and said, well, it's not much, but I'll give it some support. And I mean, Peter, it's a oh, and the, you know, yeah. you know what's going to happen politically? I mean, the Labor Party will run against him and he will have no credibility with his own people and the Labor Party will get the, you know, get the, get the seat from him. So, I mean, actually, it's a bit like the other issue, you know. Sometimes it's better just to stand on the principle where you've been uh, and make a stand there what I think he's done is he's trashed his own credibility with his own people. And it was Labor who set up the Productivity Commission report in the first place, yeah, Sue. Absolutely. Well, there you go. <laughs> but, but, you know, the bigger issue, really understand what Andrew Wilkie was saying. What he's really fearful of is a change of government. Exactly. And that's right. That's right. Saying, but not just about pokies, though. Is, there is, not just about pokies. You can't no, stand the coalition. <laughs> yeah, but there's a reason. There is no reason to believe, given everything we've seen from the coalition. And, by the way, I've spoken to all sorts of people on all sides of the House, and everybody will say to you privately, hate poker machines, the mm. disgusting, dreadful things, scourge mm. society, they're ripping the heart out of society. But you ask either party to actually stand up and show some leadership on it, neither party will. I've had Liberals say to me, Cato, I don't know why you're banging on about this, this is a problem of Labor voters. It doesn't affect Liberal voters. I mean, that's pretty repulsive. But also in the same breath I'll say, but I hate poker machines. This does no honour. This lack of leadership on both sides of the House, no honour for anyone. And the reality is the Coalition is firmly opposed to any of these changes. That's on the record as being opposed to $1 bets and mandatory pre-commitments. The polls suggest there will be a change of government. That government will be in place. Likely is not at least two, if not three terms. There ain't nothing going to happen and, on and this. And I think oh. I might have read in a newspaper recently that um, Anthony Ball was sort of sitting on a head table with Tony Abbott the other day at a, at a, at a function. I mean, you know, we understand the way this works. All right. First, uh, it's the first time since 2000.